how do you set up a rotation practically on farm and, and that'll vary to the individuals and how often they want to shift their herd. You know we sort of recommend a sort of a three to four day shift at the most. You know if you want to, you, you do get more control if you shift every day but that might not be practical for everybody. So that, that's our maximum and, and that's really set by the leaf recovery rate so you know if, you, if your cows graze a pasture then that new leaf is coming out within within three to four days so we don't want the cows to have another crack at or the sheep or whatever you're grazing to have another crack at that newly emerged leaf so that's really important so we lay out the farm map uh, get the paddock sizes and develop a rotation plan that's based on the leaf emergence rate. So that rotation will vary during the growing season. So if we have an early break, it'll be reasonably quick uh, spinning around on the rotation. But in the depth of winter, you know, we can go out to, to 35, 40 days on a rotation because it's very cold and the leaf emergence rate is, is slow. We've got to feed the animals at the same time. So we're offering less grass and with supplements come into it at that time as well. So if it's not ready, then you've got to slow the speed down and feed more supplement so stretch it out. But that applies to all the packs, not just the next one. Just recalling some of the principles of uh, grazing to three leaf in a ryegrass pasture is that we want to graze our paddocks at two to three leaf or before canopy closure. And also we want to leave our residuals at four to six centimetres. And that's a critical thing for, for the recovery of a pasture after a grazing event. Why is it so important that we don't graze, really graze them hard, you know, to below that four centimetres? So you can see that there's no remnant leaf there now. So we've got no solar panels to create new energy from the day one. Also, the energy reserves in the plant are stored at the base of the stem. So if we graze that tight, then we're taking out the energy reserves of that plant to throw new leaves out. So we really affect our production post-grazing if we go too low. So here we've, we've got a, a pasture that's been grazed less than 24 hours. So we'll just do a quick um, residual here. So four to six centimetres. So you could use a ruler, you could use a mark on your boot, or you could use, uh, I use, generally use my knuckle, it's roughly five centimetres. So generally I will go to a pasture and, and, and assess the height, the residuals that way. Another way to also things to look out for is, is to check your, your, your clumpology, so the clumps from the dung from the last grazing event, we want those sort of a, a fairly uh, even sort of angular um, edge to those. If it's a real sharp edge, then it's probably a grazing a little too hard. That's another clue. So uh, whereas if it's very loose and they're very hard to distinguish, then our grazing pressure is probably not enough. So those, the residual risks are generally Early in the season when there's not a lot of grass around, the risk is overgrazing and decking our pastures too low beyond that four to six centimetres. And that can set back dry matter production for the rest of the season. So it's really, and that's the risk, early in the season, really look after your residuals. And what are the options there? Stretch out your rotation and use supplements so the animals don't deck the pastures too hard. The risk in spring is our residuals getting out of control. And so we've got a lot, the growth rates lift, our residuals rise. So then we've got two options. We can reduce the level of supplement or remove paddocks from the rotation and turn them into hail silage and then keep control on the remainder of the paddocks so we keep control of our residuals. So the risk early in the season is overgrazing, the risk in spring is undergrazing and losing quality out of the pasture.